the fog, out of the night, and into his American adventures come Bulldog Drummond. I sit here in the boat as he skims over the lake toward the mainland. Once again, I turn to look back at the fire raging on the island. And I think of that flame-swept place as a funeral fire. And now that it's finished, I think, too, of the strange adventure and how it began. Unlike the usual coming events, the adventures I find myself in do not, as a rule, cast their shadows before them. This one, for example, had a quite enough beginning with the air buzzer. The buzzer stopped, and a moment later, Benny came into the library. Captain Drummond, the young lady is here. The young lady? What are you talking about, Benny? What young lady? You appear surprised, sir. Well, I am. But she said you were expecting her. That, Benny, is news to me. What's her name? She wouldn't say. This is all rather strange. I wonder... I wonder I like to speak to you. Oh. Well, now that you're here, suppose you begin. I suggest you start by offering your name. Well, I'd like this to be confidential. Well, if it's possible. I assure you, Denny's presence will in no way violate your desired confidence. All right, Captain Drummond. I'm Helen Sandy. I take it by that ring on your hand that it's Mrs. Sandy. Yes, Mrs. Victor Sandy. Go on. Well, it's about my husband, Victor. That's what I came to see you. What about your husband? He's jealous. Well, that's not so unusual in the case where a wife is as attractive as you are. But he'd like to see me do it. Oh, that jealous, huh? Yes, there's no basis for it. It's just his imagination. I was up at our place at Crystal Lake. There was an island out in the lake. And some of Victor's associates and friends came up for the weekend. Everything was going on all right, but then... Um, I suppose uh, Mr. Sanders raised some sort of scene. I mean, that's the usual thing. No. He still wasn't there. He was at the sanitarium. Sanitarium? Yes. My husband was confined to a mental hospital at Millbrook six months ago. We still had a complete mental and nervous collapse. The doctor said it was severe paranoia or something like that. In recent weeks, he's become progressively worse. When I went to see him last Tuesday, the attendant left the room for a while. When he's gone, Victor tried to kill me. He was like a mad animal. He tried to choke me. He said that I let him put away so I could get rid of him and could marry someone else. Well, if the opinion hadn't come back in time, I, I think I would have been dead. Well, I can well understand your being upset this way, Mrs. Sanders, but you don't seem to be in any apparent danger now. You don't need me as long as your husband is confined to the sanitarium or perfectly safe. Oh, no, that's just it, Captain Drummond. That's why I came right to you. What do you mean? Well, while I was up at the island of Crystal Lake, I received a telephone call. It was Victor. He said he was going to kill me. But I say, how could he throw you from the sanitarium? I don't imagine they'd allow him... After he hung up, I called a check. Victor escaped from the Millbrook Sanitarium tonight. That's why. Turn just ahead. You'd better slow down a bit more, Danny. Yes, sir. Yeah, what a beastly night. Uh, how much farther now? Well, it's about a mile to the lake from here. You know, I still think, Captain Drummond, that Mrs. Sanders would have been much safer back in town. As long as we're with her, she'll be all right. Yes, but you seem to be so sure that her husband is somewhere up here. Quite sure. Well, isn't that exposing her to unnecessary danger, sir? It's also a sure way of capturing Sanders before he does any damage. There's the matter of Ralph Conway, Denny, Sanders' former partner. He's at the island. You remember Mrs. Sanders told us that her husband thinks she had him confined so she could eventually marry Conway. But it's his imagination. That's part of his sickness. I know, but 
to your husband, Mrs. Sanders, that twisted thought is a living reality. Oh, well, then you think you'll kill Ralph, too? I think you might try. In view of everything you've told me, I'm as concerned about Ralph Conway's safety as I am about yours. I... <laughs> sir! Jenny, what's wrong? Why did you stop? Look, sir. In the road ahead. It's a man lying there. He looks like... Come on, Jenny. Yes, sir. You wait here, Mrs. Sanders. All right. Drummond, is he? No, no, he's just unconscious. Here, help me pop him up. Yes, sir. Now, here's his wallet. George Lawson, Millbrook Sanitarium. Millbrook Sanitarium? Hmm. Evidently by the uniform he's wearing, he's one of the sanitarium guards. Uh, I say, look, he's coming too, sir. Uh, who? Who are you? Uh, we were driving along and we found you here in the road. Uh, he got away from me, huh? I'm going to find him. I got to I do. Are you? Oh, now you don't understand. On the contrary, I do understand. Huh? I took the liberty of looking through your identification, Lawson. You are from the Millbrook Sanitarium. You are here in these mountains to track down Victor Sanders. Yeah, that's right, but... Uh, how did you know? Oh, Captain Drummond and I are here for the same reason. Captain Drummond? Yes. I'm working in Mrs. Sanders' behalf. Well, then you know about him. You know all about Victor Sanders. Yes. I say, what happened to you, Lawson? Well, we had an idea that Sanders would head to the island at Crystal Lake. And I drove up with an airman. As I came up the road, I saw somebody run across in front of my car. I was dead sure it was Sanders. He was wearing the white suit he took off the attendant he knocked out back at the sanitarium. Well, I stopped the car, and when I got out, I got it over the head. Then when I woke up, you two were here. Must have been Sanders, sir. Undoubtedly. I've got to nab him before somebody gets hurt. Oh, you won't get very far alone, Lawson. Eh? What do you mean? Your car is gone. What? Look for yourself. I'm silent. Yeah, it's gone, all right. We're on our way to the island in Crystal Lake. You are welcome to come along with us. Well, that's the spot I was headed for anyway. Well, let me give you a hand. Well, I guess you know. Okay, now. All right, then. Let's get back to the car. Oh. You mean Captain Drummond... Something just occurred to me. What is it? If it was Sanders, he's not involved with the then, then he may have reached the island by this time. He may have? Yes, and, and that means we may arrive there too late to save Ralph Conway. You get in the back seat, Lawson. Right. Captain Drummond. What is it, then? Well, look, sir. In the front seat. She's not here. Mrs. Sanders is gone. <laughs> Sanders had disappeared. He searched the woods alongside the road, but not a sign of her anywhere. The darkness of the night and the heavy downpour finally forced us to give up. Then George Lawson, the sanitarium guard, and Benny and I got into the car and drove on to Crystal Lake. At a mooring, we hired a boat and nosed it out of the darkness toward the center of the lake. And then, through the windswept rain, we made out the faint glimmer of the lights of the island. There's the island ahead, Drummond. Yes. Ready? Yes, sir. They're coming to it. Yes, I see, sir. Uh, that red one over to the right must be the dark light. There you are. One moon and I'll blow your head off. You're a trespasser, and you're not wanted. Yes, then you're holding matter makes that quite evident. Why did you come here? We're looking for Victor Sanders. We believe you're... You won't find the son. He's free now. No one will ever find my son. My face, oh, she's Sanders' mother. Your daughter-in-law neglected to mention you, Mrs. Sanders. Oh, so Helen calls you in. Well, it won't do her any good. She's keen enough against my Victor. But now he's free. She can't hurt him anymore. And you won't find him. I'll see that you don't. I'll see that no one will ever find my boy. Get out of the boat. You're coming with me. And if you don't do it, I say I promise you I'll blow you both to pieces. Now, come on. Benny and I step onto the wharf. As I got out of the boat, I saw Lawson huddled on the floor under the car. Luckily, unseen by Victor Sanders' mother, he dropped down there at the right moment. 
With a shotgun at my back, Benny and I were escorted off the wall and along a path that twisted in and out among the trees. As we made our way, I anxiously awaited the moment for Lawson to come along and save the situation. And then, the moment came. I say, Captain Drum, that was a shot, a gunshot. It certainly was, Benny. That's a lucky shot for us. Look around. Sandra's mother is no longer with us. She's gone. But she was right behind us among the girls. Obviously, the shot frightened her off. I don't understand. What is this all about? Wait. What now? Look down the path. It's a man. He's running toward us. So it must be Lawson. Oh, now I get it. Lawson fired that shot. No, Denny. That man coming this way isn't Lawson. Have your automatic ready. It is, right. No, uh, no, Captain Drummond. Yes. And I suggest you stand right where you are. Unless, of course, you care to see how this gun I'm holding works. Oh, no, no, you don't understand. That, uh, my friend, is the understatement of the week. Well, my name is Conway. Ralph Conway. Oh? Helen told me she was getting your help. I've been waiting for you to come. I, I saw that crazy mother of Victor's take you away from the wharf. I was hiding in the bushes nearby. Then you fired that shot, Mr. Conway. No, it was Saunders. He did it. Saunders is here? He fired at me. I saw him through the trees. He, he was wearing a white suit. A white suit, Denny. The one he took from the sanitarium attendant. Oh, then, sir. Sanders is on the island. Captain Drummond, you've got to stop him. You've got to stop him before he kills me. If you don't find Saunders, I'll never get off this island alive. Conway led us to the main house on the island. In the huge pine-boarded living room, he sat in a chair opposite me, wringing his hands nervously. Captain Drummond, I... I don't see what good all these questions will do. Don't, don't you understand? If you don't get me off this island, I'll be killed by that madman. You'll be all right, Conway. Denny is in the other room calling the police. Now, about the other guests who were here. I, I told you they all left when they heard that Mr. Sanders had escaped. But you remained. Why? Well, Helen said she was coming back. I was waiting for her to return with you. If I had known that Helen wasn't coming back... Mrs. I... Sanders was on her way here with me. What do you mean? She disappeared. Why? You see, we made a stop coming up the mountain road. Helen Sanders was in my car, but when I returned to the car, she was gone. Victor, he did it. He got to her. And now he's here and I'm next. You've got to get me out of here. You've got to get me away from this island. Don't you see? I'm next. I told you, Denny. Yes, call him. Gentlemen, the telephone line was dead. I checked outside. The wires have been cut. It was Victor. He's making sure I don't get out of here alive. A any sign of Lawson yet, sir? None. I wonder what happened to him. He's probably scouting the island for Sanders. Oh, really, sir, this case has more disappearing acts than a magician's convention. First Helen Sanders, then her mother-in-law, now Lawson. I have a fairly good idea where we can find Victor's mother. Where, sir? Conway here tells me that she has a small house on the other side of the island. She hasn't left this island for years. Captain Drummond. What's wrong? Victor. Come on, Denny. Conway, you stay right here. What is it, sir? Hurry. We've got to get outside. Oh, oh, what happened? Conway saw someone at the window. I got a glimpse just as he moved out of view. He was wearing a white suit. Sanders. Yes. Now watch yourself, Denny. He may be hiding in those bushes alongside of the house there. Come on, we'd better skirt around through these trees. Hold it, hold it, Denny. What is it, sir? Look over there at the rear of the house. I see him, sir. He's turning now. Yes. Coming back this way. Stay low. He's getting closer. What shall we do, sir? I'm going to try a tackle. In case I miss, have the automatic ready. It'll be ready in any case, sir. Down, Denny. They've stopped. Those shots came from behind us, Denny. Oh, but Sanders... Come on. What do now? Right ahead, where our last saw Sanders coming toward us. Yes, but if those shots came from behind us, who could have fired them? Sanders was in front of us. It couldn't have been him. No, Denny, it wasn't Sanders. Oh, dear, this gets more confounding every minute. We see Sanders, then those shots go off, and Sanders disappears like the others. Well, what does it all mean, sir? Well, there, Denny, is part of the answer. Eh? This body in the bushes over here. I see a, a white suit, Captain Drummond. It's Sanders. Yes, Denny, Sanders. And he's dead. 
Come on, Conway. This way, out to the foyer. Sanders' body is there. Hey, they've, they've shot. You killed him. You stopped him from getting to me. Oh, Captain Gum and I owe you everything. He just named that you can have anything you want. You don't owe me a thing, Conway. But you saved my life. I didn't fire the shots that killed Sanders. Whatever debt you feel you may owe, it's certainly not to me. Well, Mr. Conway, your troubles are over. So I was telling him, Denny, but he's hard to convince. Well, he can see now for himself. There's the body of the proof in that chair over there. Well, Mr. Conway, you fools. You stupid idiotic fools. What's wrong, Conway? What's wrong? That body there. That isn't Sanders. That isn't Victor Sanders at all. The dead man in the white suit wasn't Victor Sanders. Conway told him he'd never seen him before. He waited in the house a while, hoping Lawson would turn up. But Lawson didn't turn up. There was nothing left to do now but get Conway off the island as quickly as possible. He left the house and walked down the path toward the wharf. Well, you could stop worrying, Conway. There's the dock just ahead. What about us, sir? Aren't we going to clear this matter up? We are, Denny. We'll have a much better chance in the clear light of morning. We'll return here then. Captain Thomas! Uh, sir! Uh, the telling voice. It is Mrs. Sanders. There she is coming up from the walk. Well, Helen! Helen! Captain Thomas! Oh, well! Yeah. Helen, you're all right. Yes, Ralph, I'm all right. Well, Mrs. Sanders, this is a surprise. Oh, we thought that Victor had killed you. How did you get here, Mrs. Sanders? I noted over about ten minutes ago, but... I didn't expect to find you here. Why not? I wonder who first tied up at the wall. But we said now, both of the morning. Then he must have taken yours, just as he did mine. What are you talking about? After I tied my boat, I stabbed up this side of the house. Then I heard the motor start up. I rushed back to the wharf just in time to see the boat pull out into the darkness. Oh, he kept us here. We're caught. We'll never get off this island alive, any of us. Mr. Conway is convinced that your husband is here, Mr. Sanders. I know he's here. And what makes you so sure? The fact that you're here, Captain Drummond. He came over with you. With me? What are you talking about? I ran out on you before because, because I was afraid. When you left the car to help that man lying in the road, that's when it happened. Go on. What happened? When you lifted him up, I saw his face in the headlight beam. It was my husband, Victor Sanders. More? So that's what happened. Yes, Denny, it was a trick. The man in the white suit was Lawson. Sanders evidently knocked Lawson out and then took his clothes and identification. And then Lawson must have regained consciousness and come here to the island to track him down. And that madman, Sanders, was in the boat with us. Why, you were certainly fortunate, sir. Mm, up to this point... But now we're sure Sanders is on this island and it's at least four hours to dawn. And I'm not waiting until dawn. I'm getting back to the mainland. I'm getting back. I have to swim it. Conway, wait. Conway! Come on, Denny. Conway. Conway. Sir, we've got to get him back to the house and see what we can do for him. No, Denny, there's nothing anyone can do now. Conway's dead. sigh of deep relief as the pearl gray light grew brighter. I sent Denny down to the wharf to signal any early morning fishermen who might pass by. In the meantime, I was anxious to settle the main business at hand, murder. The house Victor's mother lives in is just on the other side of this hill. You're sure, Mrs. Sanders, you don't mind coming along? I'll do anything to help, Captain Dunning. But if you do get Victor, what will happen to him? He'll be put away. Only this time in a state institution. Oh. He'll never bother you again. 
This has just been terrible. Well, with a bit of luck, it'll be over soon. Where is the house, Captain Drummond, at the bottom of the hill? All right. You wait here till I return. Oh, please be careful, Captain Drummond. I made my way down the hill carefully, shielding myself behind the trees and high bushes. I managed to get within about 20 yards of the small frame house. Then there was an open clearing. I dashed quickly across the unprotected opening and stood up close alongside the wall of the house. There was a window a foot or so away. I looked in, and there he was, sitting at a table. I worked my way around to the front door, waited a moment, and then I grabbed the knob, turned it, the door pushed in. Stay where you are, Sandy. What? What? If you so much as move a finger, this automatic goes off. Raymond, stand up. Keep your hands out where I can see them, Sanders. Sanders, hey, what's the matter with you, Drummond? What do you call me Sanders for? You can drop the act. Now, look, I don't know where you get your ideas from. I'm being paid to track a guy down. I trail him to this shack. I was just looking through some of the stuff laying around here. There, you can see. Don't take another step, Sanders. What's the matter with you? You're crazy. No, but you are stark raving mad. Oh, now, wait a minute. Let me explain, will you? You won't let me explain anything, Victor. Helen, Mrs. Sanders, I told you to wait up on the hill for me. I so you did, Captain Drummond. But I decided it was best for me to be here. Now, you'd better drop that gun. What? Unless you want me to fire mine into the back of your head. Well, one of those things. Yes, that's right. Now, drop it. Uh, nice work, Helen. You came in just in time. I arranged it that way, Victor. Yes, yeah, smart girl, Helen. Well, you can give your mother the signal now. Yeah, sure, sure. Looks as if I walked into something unpleasant. Yes, you did. Well, it's all set, Helen. She got the signal. She's starting in. Good. And the wind's blowing in just the right direction. Hey, Drummond here looks sort of puzzled, doesn't he? Uh-huh. You put it mildly, Sanders. Uh, maybe I should let him in on it a little for all his trouble. Hey, Helen? All right, sister. Go ahead. Now, look, Drummond, I'm no crazier than you are. Maybe just a little foxy, but not crazy. I put on an act to get into the Norfolk Sanitarium. There was a stock swindler I was seen close to getting caught it, and I uh, figured if I was in a mental institution, they couldn't touch me. So I acted my way into one. Then while I'm away, Helen brings me the news that that lousy double-crossing partner of mine, Conway, was trying to pull a fashion. So I had to get out and take care of him before he showed me that one. And you took care of him. Just like I'll do to anybody who stands in my way. Larson was getting too close for my comfort. So he had to go too. Ask. Yes. And now you've got the story, but you're not going to be able to tell it to anybody. When I signaled my mother out the window a minute ago, she stood there by in the woods. <laughs> my mother's kind of peculiar like that. She, uh, like a kid, just loves to start fire. So pretty soon this whole island will be on fire and you and that stooge of yours are going to be here to enjoy it. Helen and I have a boat waiting for us in a cove back of the hill. And that's all there is to it. That right, Helen? No, Victor. No, there's more. Yeah, what's that? The part I didn't tell you. Oh, what are you talking about? You're staying here with Drummond, Victor. Huh? Conway wasn't double-crossing you, Victor. He wasn't double-crossing you at all. What? I just told you that. So you break out of that place and kill Conway. That would put you both out of the way permanently. And as your dutiful wife, I fall heir to the business. Oh, and that's why I called Drummond in. So everything would look right. But it didn't turn out that way, did it, Mrs. Sanders? No, but this way will do just as well. I'll still get everything I planned for. Yes, I can see the fire is working its way down here fast, so I'd better get started. Victor, you'll be first. My loving husband will be the first of you to go. Oh! All this is changed your plan. Oh, no. Nice shooting, Betty. Oh, I say, it was just a shoulder wound. Don't be so regretful about it. The mistake will take off where you left off. How, how did he get here? It'll be a pleasure answering that one, Mrs. Sanders. You see, I was somewhat suspicious of you last night when you came to me for help. 
When I called the sanitarium to check on your husband's escape, they told me that he'd broken out at 9 o'clock. You were in my house at 10. It would have been physically impossible for you to get from Crystal Lake to my place in less than two hours. Therefore, you must have known in advance of your husband's plan to escape. And that's about it, Mrs. Sanders. Now, let's get out of here before we're all broiled. I sit here in the boat as it skims over the lake toward the neighborhood. Once again, I turn to look back at the fire raging on the island. And I think of that flame-swept place as a funeral pyre. And I think, too, of the strange adventure which has just ended. 